so glad you guys popped on. I'm just reading Claudette's here, feeling under um, attack. Anybody else just feeling heavy? Um, Claudette, can I just speak into that a minute? Um, this is something that I have been really digging into lately because I felt this heaviness. Um, you know, as a Christian, I'm like, I'm supposed to have the joy of the Lord, not feeling the joy of the Lord. What's going on? <laughs> and um, just uh, so I've been reading a book um, about um, a true story about a, a missionary, one of the first missionaries in China. So this is like 1870. Okay, just getting to China from England would have been an extraordinary feat. <laughs> Um, but then to be a missionary there where they, um, at that time, especially, um, were very cautious of foreigners and literally like would, um, there were times when foreigners would be killed. <laughs> and, um, for many years, the, the first portion of his mission, um, you know, just came under. Um, that weariness, um, his, his health struggled immensely, um, but just felt such a burden to share um, light with people who were living in darkness, which I found really interesting because our, our world today really highly um, lifts up um, like the, the, the religion of China, right? Um, Buddhism. Hinduism is not China. Hinduism is India, I believe, but um, Buddhism, um, those, those, you know, that Eastern medicine is really highly praised right now. And so it was interesting to me to find out how many people were just not um, feeling fulfilled in that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, he felt just such a burden to bring light to China. And uh, the book is called Hudson Taylor's Spiritual Secret. And he talks about how he just, he learned all of a sudden, like it just began to click. And I say all of a sudden, but it was probably very gradually over time, just God constantly showing him to be constantly relying on him. You know, the creator and sustainer of life. Who else are we going to rely on, right? We try to rely on our own strength. So I, I do believe that when we carry that, that heaviness, that burden, um, somewhere we are putting faith in something that's not God. Um, <clears throat> we're putting faith in, in our own energy. We're putting faith in our own skills, our own, our own faith. <laughs> right. Um, so we just talked about how we just need to be continually drinking from the living water, um, not drank from the living water, like past tense, but drinking, constantly drinking. So Claudette, I'm just going to, pray for clarity for you as to um, where, where that heaviness is coming from. Um, yes, it's an attack from the enemy. And I think that that plays out as um, confusion sometimes. And if I'm totally out, out um, don't worry about me. This is just my own thoughts. Um, we're going to pray into it and God will direct you. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to go into that for so long, um, but maybe somebody else needed to hear that as well. Um, but I will absolutely pray that that is lifted. So thank you for joining me here, ladies. Uh, Father, I thank you um, for your answered prayers for Susan and for Nevaeh. Um, I thank you that you have blessed them and have... Um, given them strength and healing. And we ask that you would continue um, to bring strength uh, for your people, Lord. We are feeling the heaviness of the darkness of this time, this season that we are in uh, confusion and um, fear. Father, we bind up the enemy. We bind up confusion. We bind up fear. We bind up darkness. And we remember that all it takes for darkness to flee is to light a match, to turn on a light. And so we ask for your light. 
to cause this darkness to flee. And Father, if there is anything that is keeping us in darkness right now, God, we ask that you would bring it to mind so that we can confess it and be free from it. So that we can live in the light, um, able to see clearly. Father, we pray for clarity. We ask that you would release clarity and strength and power and peace over these women here with me today and over this nation, Lord. We ask for um, light shining in the darkness. We ask for truth and peace, Lord. There's so much confusion. We hardly know what is right and what is true. But Lord, you know, you know the truth. You see all things. You know all things. We put our faith in you, our hope in you, our trust in you. And um, we just seek your light and your truth. You ask, you promise that when we seek, we will find. And so, Lord, we seek truth today. We seek you today. <sighs> Father, I lift up Claudette and her knee. Lord, you know exactly what's going on in her body, mind, and spirit. And we ask for healing for her knee <clears throat> and her body, her whole body, her mind, and her spirit. And we ask that if this is for your purpose, Lord, you would reveal to her that purpose. We know that you use hard things for your purpose. And we, um, we, put, our, we put our trust in you. Um, that we know that if you've um, brought this challenge before us for purpose, um, that you will also give us the strength to endure it. And if it's not from you, Lord, if it's from the enemy, we ask that you would bring healing in our bodies and our minds and our spirits. And God, we bring before you Shelly. We thank you that she's been feeling much better over this past weekend. We thank you for the um, prayers of those who love her. And um, we thank you for the relief that that has brought. And we ask for continued healing, Lord. Walk her through this, um, through this healing, body, mind, and spirit. Give her relief from the pain, heal the infections. Um, and God, we just ask, we, we do ask boldly for complete healing. Um, <clears throat> we understand that that's, that's a bold request, Lord, but um, you can do it. Lord, you, you created the heavens and the earth. You split the Red Sea. You fed the Israelites in the desert for 40 years. You gave them water from a rock. And you can heal, Shelley. You can heal all our wounds. Lord, we ask for wisdom and discernment. You, you promise that um, if anyone needs wisdom, that we should ask. And Father, you also promise in your word that <clears throat> You are a father who does not give a snake when we ask for bread. You know how to give us good gifts and, um, and more than we could ever ask. So Lord, we put our trust in you, our good father. And God, for those of us who struggle with picturing you as a good father, because we've not experienced a good father, we've not experienced um, godly men who love us the way you love us, and we never will. God, our, all of our fathers are imperfect humans. All our mothers are imperfect humans. <clears throat> we are imperfect humans, but you, you love us perfectly. And so, Lord, we come to you for your perfect love to be filled, to be restored, to be sustained. You promise that when we drink of 
your water, the living water, that we will never thirst. And so, Lord, we come to you today and we drink of your living water. And we are strengthened. And Lord, we need to keep continually drinking of your living water every day, just like we need to drink of water. We need to continually drink of your living water. So when we feel thirsty, when we feel tired, Lord, remind us to drink of the living water. Help us to slow down and focus on you, Lord. And focus on Jesus who, for the joy set before him, endured death on the cross. Lord, remind us of his sacrifice and all that he endured for our sake, for your sake, for your glory, and for our glory. And I thank you that we get to be a part of that. I thank you that we get to experience that. Father, you are good. All this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus for your glory. Amen. Okay, so I promised, I promised that um, I would share this vision from 2013. Um, seven years ago, I, um, I had a vision, which I did not actually believe in at the time. Um, <clears throat> my understanding was that vision, visions were for um, the, the Old Testament prophets, um, or even, I guess, the New Testament disciples, but I didn't, I didn't, I don't know anybody um, personally who had visions. Um, and I had never, yeah, I had never experienced anything like that. Um, <clears throat> but it was in a season where I was working through forgiveness. I was forgiving people who had hurt me. I was very intentionally, like I had written down their names. I had journaled some of the hurts. And um, I, yeah, was just very intentional about it. It wasn't anything like I, I didn't feel this big, oh, when I had forgiven these people, but I was just working through the process. Sometimes we just have to be obedient. Anyway, I had closed my journal and um, was getting ready to go to bed and I had crawled into bed. I no, I, the lights were off, but I was still wide awake. And all of a sudden I could see very clearly, very distinctly um, this image in my mind. And it was at this time, I, I thought it was just for me. Um, I didn't share it with anybody. I shared it with my husband. Um, but that was it. Um, but I, I believe now that this is, this is a message for more than just me. And if you're hearing this today, it's, it's, it's for you too. Um, so the image started out, there was people walking in darkness. So all I could see, it was like kind of a black and white image. Um, and it was just the figures of people walking away from me, walking in darkness. And then um, there was this wolf in the corner, just like barking and attacking um, the people. And the, um, the wolf and the whole image just went up in flames. Everything, everything that I could see, everything just burned away. And if you're, I'll go into some of the imagery after, but so everything just burned away. And after like the flames kind of like burned off, then this beautiful flower rose up and this um, phrase, beauty will rise, um, came with this flower. And then that was kind of the end of the image, end of the vision. And at the time I didn't really know exactly what it meant, but I just had this sense of peace. Even though it was a fairly disturbing image, um, it was just this knowing that um, hard times were coming. 
Um, but it was going to be okay. Um, and I just, yeah, I had this peace. Uh, about a year later, um, I experienced the greatest pain of my life in my family. There was um, serious breakdown and heartache, like indescribable. At this time, I can't even go into the story um, because it's still, it's still not, um, it's still not worked out. I still don't know the truth to be perfectly honest. Um, but, um, so that was six years ago that things just completely fell apart. And I was dealing with, um, chaos and lies and darkness, unlike anything I'd ever seen. And when this came about, I remembered the vision and realized, oh, this is part of the burning down. This is part of the process. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the idea of refining, but refining is a heating process, a burning process. So when you refine silver, um, all of the impurities out of silver are literally burned away. You heat up the silver to such a high temperature that anything that is impure um, burns away, separates, it disappears, so that you are left, you are left with pure silver. Same with gold. Um, diamonds are created under pressure, so not heat, but um, under extreme pressure. And actually there would be heat with, with the pressure. Um, anyway, I believe that this is the process that we are undergoing. Um, this burning process. <laughs> Um, and it hurts. It hurts so bad. But it removes, it removes all the things that we don't even like about ourselves, to be perfectly honest. It removes the things that are not good. It's not good for us. It's not good for others. It's not good for the world. Um, so that's what I believe that the, the burning away was. Um, that's what it represents. And I believe that we are experiencing that right now that we are experiencing extreme temperatures <laughs> and um and it's good it's good so i would encourage you to to welcome it to embrace it actually and to um allow it to um to purify and refine you and i want to encourage you that beauty will rise and i've been asking god what does beauty mean like i can that's not a word that i've read in my bible um i do believe it's biblical because obviously everything that's beautiful god created right um but it's not something that I think about much it's usually like you know holiness or um glory or um something like that but um that God would use that phrase, beauty will rise. And um, there is there is a, a Bible verse that says beauty from ashes. That uh, It's in Isaiah. And Isaiah is a beautiful story. Beautiful. I say story, but truth. Um, where, where the Israelites experience um, like total destruction and complete restoration. And I believe that this continues to happen throughout history. I don't, I don't, I believe we're in the end times. Um, and, um, but I don't believe that this is the end of the world. Okay. There's a lot of people who are talking about like, this is the end of the world. Um, I believe we're in the end times, but that could be 10 years. It could be a hundred years. It could be a thousand years. Um, but I, I do believe that we need to be alert. Um, and just embrace the process that we, you know, our, our role, we just got to do our role. Okay. We don't have to take on the world. We don't need to save the world. We don't need to be anxious about anything. We don't need to be fearful. Um, we, we just need to be alert. We need to be paying attention to what is going on, but not focusing on what's going on in the world. We need to be focusing on Jesus. 
that's our role. Focus on Jesus, focus on um, what he did for our sake so that we can be healed. And, and our role in, uh, you know, when we embrace healing, when we embrace all that God has done for us, when we confess and are free from the darkness, then, um, then others will experience, like the light will shine through us and we will be a light shining on a hill. Um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, most of these things that I'm referring to are references in the Bible. We are called to be a light on the hill. So when we experience healing in our own lives, we will be a light shining on the hill. And that's our, that's our, that's our purpose. That's our, our role. And people will experience that light through us. And um, they will receive healing because of it too. That's truly what I believe our purpose here is. Um, so just encourage you to, to embrace, um, embrace the refining process. Um, and embrace the healing process that comes through it and allow yourself to be healed. Um, yeah. And keep your eyes on Jesus, okay? That is so important right now. Keep your eyes on the creator, the one who, who created life and sustains life because there is so much heaviness right now uh the the uh the uh, Hudson Taylor the missionary I mentioned earlier endured so much he endured so much um I'm not going to get into it because honestly it, it creates fear in me I'm not I'm not ready for what he endured um but I will say that because he kept his eyes on Jesus and he kept drinking from the living water he was sustained through hardships that we can't even fathom. So be encouraged, my friends. Um, beauty is coming. Glory is coming. Um, goodness is coming. Restoration is coming. Um, God is with you. You are never alone. That is the one thing that sustained um, Hudson Taylor was that... Um, even though he was, you know, flawed and broken, God is not. And God promises to be faithful. God promises to never leave us or forsake us. So God will never leave you or forsake you. Thank you so much, friend, for um, joining me today. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Um, God is so good. And he is doing good things. I will, um, I'll do prayer again next week. So if you do have any other requests, let me know. And I will definitely um, be sure to pray. <laughs>